Oh, that was nice. Woo! That was a- well, we lost JB due to time constraints. You either will go too fast or too slow. I needed it at a medium pace. Mm. Oh. Synchronized? Synchronized? Figured. Boom. Ooh, that All those were, that was a strong round of pops. If I had to go around, that's there's like seven eights around the board. I think that was pretty strong. Is that the best grade you give? I need a I need a second decimal too. Have you? I said yeah, those seven, are those I said, are rookie scores. I said seven point eight. Uh, oh, I thought seven, you said eight. seven or eight. Seven point yeah. eight. I mean, yeah. you, say, you get up into those eights. That's a grade A quality crack there. Yeah, you're not you're not getting a, you're not getting a, one drink. That's, everyone that's knows Tyrone, the rules. That's Tyrone Biggums, right there. That's fucking knock. It's <laughs> not for you, Captain Boy. For hours, I know. All right, so we lost JB. We're back. We're going to hit you with a little trade targets here. Uh, I know it's only week two, and uh, with my guy JMW on the, on the Discord, on our, on our chats, you know, hey, maybe, maybe just don't go trading week two, huh? How about we just keep the bullets in the gun and just fucking relax? But, hey, we know Shooter, that... We shooter's going to shoot. We know that you want it, and, and people, <laughs> people like to shoot. Big Cub likes to trade. Everybody oh, likes to trade. Oh, people just... They don't even care who you should trade for them person for just who are you trading for so jb had some targets i'll just read those off quickly and then some of them we'll dive into a little more i had dk on the screen when this video started you know go ahead and trade for dk he right. don't panic on dk but let's move forward off of dk so he has russell wilson for Superflex. oh definitely got to make a russell wilson video. we'll get a whole video on him tyler conklin which the, he was on our list as well we talked about him in the live stream he's been on the field a ton the targets are crazy uh, if you're looking for a tight end, super cheap. Um, he's on the field a lot, and he's been getting the targets. It's basically everybody yep. needs a tight end. He should be pretty cheap. Yep. Um, then he's got Traylon Burks on here, which I think maybe we'll talk a little bit more about. Yep. He's got Jeff Wilson on here, which I don't know that I necessarily agree with, but that's fine. Um, Brandon Ayuk on here. Yep. Um, so those were kind of his, his guys. Uh, so I like a lot of those. We were in agreement on a lot of them. Like I said, we just we get he gets on here. We get we get doing the Mary to the game thing and start going for a while, um, you know, and it happens. You know, we're just having a good time. So uh, let's you want to dive into one of his guys first or you want to just keep it fresh and funky off the. Rip? Let's do Traylon. Traylon. Yeah, I think Traylon's a good one. Traylon. All right. Why do you guys think Traylon's a good trade uh, target right now? He's a good player. <laughs> Just a good player. Because people want to hear about him. He's got a high A dot. He's got a high yards per route run. He's the best receiver they have. Right. Because the numbers haven't been crushing it, and he's a stud talent. Yeah. And that's when you buy, guys. I think that's... I the think numbers that's, aren't crushing. Stud talent. That's a fair Buy the motherfucker. And this was where JMW's theory would be wrong if there is some... some Variance to hop in on because that you don't think a guy's performed to the standard that he could. Um, maybe you hop in here. I'm not sure if anybody would be wanting to unload Traylon after spending a top was, six pick he, he on him. Though. But he was falling. He was near the end of draft, certainly fallen. Um, and you know, really, I think it's just a, a, a the offense just has been pretty terrible in mm. general through a few weeks. Derrick yeah. Henry hasn't gotten rolling. The offensive line doesn't look great. Yeah, um, three point four three yards per route run. Right. Uh, so a lot of upside, I think, there that's untapped with Traylon Burke so far. I don't think it would matter if A.J. Brown was there too much right now. Uh, he certainly wouldn't be doing what he would be doing in Philly right now. I think it would be A.J. Brown would be concerning some people as well for not being, you know, yeah. as high as what you paid for. Now so, A.J. Brown has probably moved to the third wide receiver in Dynasty. Right. Um, so go buy Traylon Burks if at all possible. Uh, let's who you got next, Matt? Um, I have. We're going back to the tight end. We're going, we're going back to tight ends. I'm buying Juwan Johnson. Woo, man. We need like stud guys. No one gives a fuck about <laughs> Juwan Johnson. You might've been able to get him off the waiver wire. For I mean, free. This, you I, I couple, like it. So a the, couple weeks ago, I mean, but he went, he went in every, in every league that I was in, I either own him or that he wasn't owned. I either own him or I was outbid on. Why do you like cheap Juwan Johnson? I like this because J- Jason wants the studs, but I like <laughs> nobody I like, cares I about like tight pro- ends. I like to provide tiered ways of buy. Everybody wants to go in there, and if we give you a bunch of really expensive guys to buy, like g- yeah. give you some cheap guys that could be on yeah, the come up. I want to. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna consider sending a third out to a team 
for Johnson because I could use a little bit of help at tight end. A have 23 third? The glorious 23 class where every single pick's going to be a fucking banger? It's still a third. You're going out there and getting the second tight end for the Saints? He's the first tight end. Uh, not even close. Your boy, uh, Taysom Hill's in the wine. No, he's not, he's not playing, so I don't care. Yeah, I, I, I don't. Me and Big Co were really high on Jawan Johnson um, coming into the season here last year. Last yeah. year, bought him up everywhere after you yeah. know that first round of waivers on FFPC. Sure, great pickup. Um, is there is there a it wasn't usage number year. that you like? Yeah, with he's Juwan? getting a lot of slot. He's get, he's getting he's getting he's in the top fifteen for slot percentage for tight ends. He's in the top fifteen for a dot for tight ends. He's on the field on the field a lot. He's on the field A-dot, higher than drink. Him. He's on he's on the field more than any other tight end for the Saints. A former wide receiver. Former wide receiver, Penn State and Indy line. Um mm. finished his career at Oregon. Mm. Transferred to Oregon, so but he met his wife at Penn State, so it's good. Um but I, he's a good player. I think now he got it's all, I think all he, coming together. I think he got banged he was banged up in college a bit. He's banged up a little bit. Um in the NFL, but I think he's a good talent. He's a wide receiver playing tight end. Yeah. I agree. Uh, and, and those are the kind of guys where we've been trying to push towards of saying the NFL is kind of moving there. And then the Waller yeah. mold, that was kind of what me and Big Co were drawn to last year. Maybe you could get a Waller light, cheap version, yeah. see how it develops. Hasn't quite worked out yet, but this year getting good numbers usage wise. Can um, I give you a stud to go by? Go ahead. DJ Moore. DJ Moore. Perpetual okay. by DJ Moore. Why is that? Because Matt Rule is going to be the first coach to get fired. He's a slob. Baker's not <laughs> long for Carolina. Um, it, it, it he's 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 a good player. He's on the field a hundred percent of the snaps for the Panthers, and he's a good player. Like he's a good player. Like I don't he's, like he's consistently been good enough with not a whole lot. Yeah, but I we're getting to the point now where DJ Moore is what is he twenty twenty six? I don't think he's that old. He's, he's twenty five. Twenty five. He'll be twenty six soon enough. So, but he's, 26 next year. Yeah. yeah. Not this year. Yeah. So you still got, yeah. So it's DJ Moore. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence with this one. I, 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 23 first? I want 23 first. Yeah, for sure. I want, I want to be really in on DJ Moore because I do like the talent. He's been dealing with a lot of garbage just around uh, him and the ecosystem and all that. So I want to say buy him, but I've just, I've had him the last couple of years and I've been buying in and been buying in and it just hasn't been quite the ROI that I like. So I can understand it, but I've, I've, I'm, I'm against that one personally. But I like it. I like it. Buy a stud. That's your guy. How do you have 43 yards each of the first two weeks? What, three for six. Just that, that Carolina offense is just yeah. Scored a touchdown last week, though. Yeah. Not good. I, yeah. I... I, I he had the luster and he had the analytical love for years. Which he's been in the league. I think he came in out as a twenty year old. So this is like so old. But he's not. He's still only twenty five. He's only been in the league four years. Like, I just I'm holding the stock that I do have of him and I, I don't want to acquire any. That's fair enough, but hey, that's why we do this. We say... Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be a big circle jerk of agreements here. Yeah. This would be a fucking boring podcast. Right. I I love it. I like I like Spicy Matt. Where's Spicy Matt been all my life? DJ Moore? <laughs> At the circle jerk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he doesn't Sp- want to go to the circle jerk. DJ Moore... Luke, why not? Lukewarm on the trade. Um, for me, <laughs> I'd go Deontay Johnson if I'm buying studs here. I like where we've been. He, he's been so good throughout the last couple of years... Mitchell, not long for this system, but still Hashtag free Kenny P. Still getting twelve targets and ten targets, seven receptions, six receptions, fifty-five yards and fifty-seven yards, twelve and thirteen PPR points in the last. Really haven't completely broken out yet, so I think there's still some Deontay, but I think you could buy you could certainly buy DJ Moore for a little cheaper because yeah, that, yeah. You, what 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 I wanted DJ Moore to be is Deontay Johnson, what he just, currently is. Yeah, I think I just don't I don't think. I am not a Kenny Pickett guy. I don't think Kenny Pickett's going to come in and unlock Deontay Johnson. Is he a step up above Mitchell? Right. Yes. I, I guess that's what I'm saying is I don't need him to unlock him. I just need him to be a step above and continue getting these targets and just put him in a little bit better position to succeed. Sure. 
So that's why I'm, if we'll see what happens in Carolina, I just, we need a whole bunch to change in Carolina. Pittsburgh's just steady. They re up Deontay. Deontay's been really good target percentage wise. And just on the field, he's, he's a top 24 receiver year in year out um so what's I, the I'd beef be with buying. kenny p why you not why you don't like Pickett? it he went through eight yards in a game <laughs> acc championship game eight fucking yards so i like one bad game he i like the pizzazz i like the pizzazz i saw from kenny p in the in the preseason he here had, i would have loved to have seen i would have loved to see kenny pickett without jordan addison yeah I mean, I'm, so but no I've, you can't have any good players to throw to and you have one bad game you're out and you got small hands. Makes your dick look bigger. I don't give a bigger, shit about his hands. I don't give <laughs> a shit about his hands. I didn't. I didn't think he was a good deep ball thrower. I just. I, I just guess. Think, I just think he's mid. I mean, I don't. I don't think. I don't. Maybe. Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't think that he's a bad player. I just think that he's just an okay quarterback. Yeah, and that's all I need. I just need. So to we be need a, for Deontay. I just. Yeah, need, I, I just mean, need to yeah, be a little I, bit better than Mitchell. Yeah, that's and and that's fair. And, and I think that's totally fair. You don't need fucking Josh Allen coming in there. Right. You just need Jared Goff coming in there. Right. If Josh Allen was there, Deontay would be like a fucking yeah, second round pick. Yeah, he'd be. He, he would literally be Stephon Diggs. Let's let's. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna throw out another big time stud, and I don't think I don't know that this is necessarily like. Hey, you can just go buy him for picks, which maybe you might be able to do with Deontay not really jumping off the page. Maybe you got sell a twenty three first there. for Deontay. Um, I would sell a twenty three first for Gian. I would buy Deontay for a twenty three first. I would consider it. This next, look at that! Holy fuck! We're this selling next guy, 23 first. I'd give you a twenty three first for him all day. I'm gonna go Pittman here. Oh, easy. Um, I'd give you the 23 first. I'd also say, basically, I'm, I'm looking at Pittman as more as like somebody you're trying to like, you got a decent receiver and you want to upgrade to somebody who could yeah. go to the next level. Something with, you know, you just saw Matt Ryan without Pittman, regardless of where we think this Colts oh, offense cool. is going. Just he peppered him in the first game. He's peppered his, his uh, wide receiver one throughout yeah. his career. Um, Pittman. You know, obviously gets a little banged up here. Maybe opens a small buy window because he didn't crush week two, and maybe somebody's like, "Well, the Colts look like dog shit." Maybe it's there. Maybe you could take a an older receiver like a Mike Evans and something else and move up to, you know, Pittman. Well, might might be a buy window for Mike Evans with since he's suspended this week again. Sure, I'm just <laughs> just kind of using that Nobody as a frame wants of reference. To buy Mike yeah, Evans. I, That's I a problem. Yeah. I'm using. I'm just using that as sure, like an I, older, I just a an example of of how to framework that deal that I would say just like, Hey, we're, I'm just not giving away of my whole 23 draft to get Pittman. Like just trying to figure out a way to maybe move in a little bit older wide receiver. Maybe you throw in somebody who might still have a glimmer of hope as a younger guy and a pick or something to, to try to get maybe like a Mike Williams and plus for Pittman. Yeah. I, I'd give you, I'll give you Mike Williams and a first for Pittman. How you feel about that? That's a lot. That's a lot. Spicy. That is spicy. You better get back the two. I mean, we'll see what happens, but I mean, I don't know that I'm doing that. Okay, that's a lot. I think Mike Williams that's is a, still a, a really good. Mike player. Williams is a great. We just saw how great Mike. Oh Williams, yeah, Mike, you're you're right. I may have I may have got a little overzealous there. <laughs> I think week one, Mike Williams, maybe, but week, week two. two. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> recency. I'd give. Yeah, we'll sure. Play a redraft of if, dynasty. If you here. wanted to use a player like Mike Williams. Mike Williams in a two to go up for Pittman. Much more would palatable. You give sure. Sutton, palpable. Would you give palatable. Sutton and palatable. Some, Sutton and a little bit of on top for to get Pittman. I think I'm keeping. I think I'm keeping Sutton. What about Godwin? I'd be okay with moving Godwin because of the uncertainty of the future. Could you get just, just Pittman look, straight up for Godwin? The, I'm just looking at the play. I don't know yeah. if you could get him straight up because one guy's Godwin hurt. To come back and play. But you need Pittman to come back and play. Yeah. God get got unlimited practice true, today. Good time. It's a good time. <laughs> I'd move Godwin for Pittman, but yeah. So a, a trade uh, there for for Michael Pittman uh, was was a guy that I'd be targeting currently. Target. Um, I was targeting Pittman startup season redraft Pitt, all day. Pittman sure. or Drake London? Mm. Good question. If I can get, I London, know you hate Drake. You don't like Drake. Drake for Stanford, do right and kill everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little rap lyric. Um, uh, yeah, pleasure. if I could, if I could get Drake and like a a second for you're Pittman, not getting more than Drake. For Pittman. You might, you Drake might. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. If I, if I, sorry, if I could sell, if I could sell Drake for Pittman in a second, I'm doing that. 
Yeah, I think uh, you, you might- start there, then you downgrade this Pittman straight up for Drake. Which one you want? Oh, I think I'm still taking Pittman. I think I want Drake. I'll be interested. I think the one thing that we're I'm seeing hard recency bias on Drake. I think right the now, one which I always I did like Drake a lot. You shut up. I think the <laughs> one thing we're missing with Drake is we're seeing Pitts. We're seeing Pitts, but there's a guy who's currently not playing right now who's going to be there again next Calvin year. Ridley? Calvin Ridley. Calvin uh, Ridley. Calvin Ridley will not be a Falcon next year. There's sure zero will. chance He'll Calvin Ridley will be a Falcon. He's going to be a Falcon. Let's bet on it. What do you want to bet? Let's do a pie to the face. Fuck okay. it. Sure. Book it. They were already trying to trade him, and then he fucking gambled his way out of not being tradable. He's, he'll be a Falcon. All right, let's go. Who's the next trade target for you? They're going to cut him. He'll be somebody else. I'm trading for. I'm still trading for Kadarius Tony. Yeah? I'm still trading for Tony. Got to be cheap right now. Oh, for sure. And that's like. So how, is the second too much? I mean, that's what you paid for him. Seems like it's probably too much right probably now. Probably too much. I would be probably more willing to give two thirds. Two thirds start there, and then would you do the, the two, two three, three swap? swap? That seems fair, but you probably don't have to. I don't think you have to. Would you trade Curtis Samuel for Tony? Yes. Quick answer. Like that. Trade right. the one guy who will get hurt for the guy that is hurt and is always hurt. <laughs> Tony's always hurt. He has not, not been but hurt. But what, what we're looking for, the talent on the field is... I'll take the swing. Yeah. I'm not a snap. Nope, it's not answer. Even. Nope, but I'll take the swing. All right, I'm gonna throw out another guy. Let me get one. Go, go ahead. Travis Etienne, baby. Etienne. I think you've already said on the stream you would trade a 23 first for Etienne. All day. That's that makes Matt feel not great. Love the new girl reference, by the way. Er, damn. What day. makes you? What makes er, you day. want so confident in trading for Etienne? Because he's fucking awesome. So is James Robinson. He hasn't even gotten unleashed. James Robinson had 23 carries for 63 yards. Much like is that fucking a, awesome? Or is that just like pedestrian? Much like he has a Penn State hat on, he's got a Clemson mouse pad, Clemson you colored shorts on. You can see it, and everyone knows. He might have a Clemson tattoo on his ween. He's got a t- Clemson thong on. Casey, are you not trading a, a 23 first for Travis Etienne? Case over w- there, Mister Mister Etn. I would I I I want to say I, yes, but I'm, I'm right now I'm pretty pretty hesitant. I mean, the on a on a two games on a man. smash contender. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm just it's what the I guess what really gives me a, a, like Etn looks beyond a better and we're, tar, and we're, and we're, uh, prospect than Etn is Bijan. Yes, and we're betting. Yes, a hundred percent. We're betting. I don't think so. Well, I think you're wrong, so it's okay. He's a much better running We're, back than much better runner mm-mm. than ETN. Maybe, you could maybe say he's a better receiver than ETN, no, but no, I think not running back. We're betting on the talent of ETN to trade the first, which I do believe in the talent of ETN. I do think he's really good. I do think he's really talented. But Travis, did you trade? The, so you're telling me you trade? Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I apologize. No, it's fine. You're telling me right now you had the surefire 101. You would trade it for Travis ETN. No, you wouldn't know that you had the surefire one. I'm just one. saying theoretically. I'm, I'm, I'm saying in a theoretically in a non superflex league, you would trade the 101 for Travis Etienne. Man, I know because the that, 101 that, that, right that now, 101 is, is the so 101 valuable. The 101 is Bijan Robinson, without a doubt, right now. Not even uh, wouldn't even hesitate. I don't know where Bijan's gonna go. Okay, I don't know how that season's gonna end. I don't know how the 23 class is gonna shape up. I don't know who's gonna get hurt. I don't know who's gonna go back. For a 24 class, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know what's going to happen. It's not gonna be I'll say, I'm just going to say it every freaking week, multiple times. This 23 class <laughs> has so much hype on it that it can never live up. I want the player that I know is good. Now, I don't know. I know Travis Etienne is good. I've watched like every single snap that he's ever fucking played. And I think that the limited touches that he's gotten through two games in the NFL have looked fucking great. He, too. Has, he has been good. I'm just worried that. I don't think he's ever going to be – I think he's – I think – How can you finish that statement after two games in the NFL? You know what I mean? I don't even know what you were going to say. Because I'm just not sure that I can trust Travis Etienne running between the left tackle and the right tackle well, in the NFL. Well, that's because you're dumb. <laughs> he's got wicked torque. You just you, – you getting caught up in this Twitter no lateral agility shit? I, I don't understand. I didn't say he didn't have lateral I'm putting agility. words in your mouth? Yes. Yeah. 
I'm, I just don't understand why you don't think he can run between the tackles. My man was fucking crushing people for four straight fucking years. Yeah, and, and leading us to national championships. And, like, and, and then the and then caught like forty fucking balls. And against Bama and against Ohio against State. every fucking and, one. I'm saying I'm not saying he's not a good player. I just told you I'd trade a 23 first for him. I'm not I'm not moving on early first for Travis. You said Etienne. you wouldn't trade a 23. Yes, I did. First I said I would trade a late 23 first for Travis Etienne. Yeah. I said on a contender I would trade for a Travis Etienne for a 23 first. I would I would do that. I'm not trying to tell our listeners to trade the 1-1 one, one in a 23 class for Travis Etienne, but I could definitely see me doing that. I can uh, see yeah. me doing that because I fucking love Travis. I'm going to advise like, against that. Yeah. And, and you know. Because regardless of how it turns out, that pick is way more valuable than Travis currently sure, is. Sure. The fact that you had a older undrafted running back come back from an Achilles faster than you thought he would. Like, there's a, a lot of tears of this. Faster than you thought he would, or maybe ever, and then take away from what you thought ETN would get. Is is you can't ever he's just also coming off it for to Jason's point, right. He's basically he's also a rookie. coming off injury as well too. Right. He's a basically a rookie as well. Liz Frank. But there's there's no way that you could have just been like, oh, I knew J Rob was going to come back and this was going to hinder ETN. No, the part of the allure of VTN was that he was going to get a chance to probably really solidify himself, get a bunch of opportunity, and then show you what he can do, which I do think if he gets enough opportunity, he'll be just fine. This past week, you saw his usage and the, his snaps on the field kind of flip a little bit and not be quite as reassuring as you had the first game, but they were also playing with a bigger lead, which probably lends to yeah. J-Rob's skill set a little bit more currently. And they, 23 they, for like 67 yards. It wasn't like he was... I'm, they're all, again. Wilding they're out. also but twenty-three is the number. That's again, like they're also a little in the bit lead, alarming. and you're so you kind of know, like, regardless of what that was, and you could say you could take away the run. That's a silly thing to say with every running back, the long run. But like, they were also playing with a pretty big lead, so it's not like you didn't expect them to run the football. So it's just like, take that for what it is. At the end of the day, I mean, it's if you're gonna cite that, that's worse for your boy Travis Etienne because they're still giving him the ball over Travis Etienne. So. You know, and I'm 20, not and right, I'm, 23 carries. And that's I'm a not, lot. And I'm not trying to say that at all. But I mean, I, I would, I think, trade a 23. I would absolutely trade a 23 first. It would just have to be a little later in the season to so I could know. Like, I, I, I can't get caught up in being like people will ask us right now. Well, would you? Uh, uh, it's expected a mid this or whatever. Like, yeah, I, I don't, don't fucking know. know. Yeah, like, sure. We got to like, We got to let things play out and know that this team's probably not. If it's a if it's a you know, a non playoff team that could be a top four pick, then, you know, maybe not. I mean, in one of my leagues, we have a team who has yet to score 75 points in a, in a super flex league. I'm not trading his first for Travis right. ETN. But I do, I do, I do believe in the skill set of ETN, but, and I, and I was all in, all into ETN, but it, it hasn't been great these first couple of weeks. He can't be in your lineup right now. I do believe, I do think he looks really good with the ball in his hands. Um, so it'll just, you know, have to let it play out here and see how it goes. He needs to earn some more touches. He needs basically. to learn. Um, so, all right, let's go to another trade here. I'm going to go Christian Kirk. He's averaging 2.79 yards per route run. 7.1. Is that good? Yak per reception. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, no, I just 10.8 a dot and 16 targets and 12 receptions. He's absolutely crushing it right now. And obviously... Again, this is sort of in the vein of you're going to try to upgrade a little bit here. Nobody came like Christian Kirk was a great buy in the offseason right now. Yeah. Do you want to buy a guy at the peak of what he's doing and how good he's been these last two weeks? No, but I feel like he's seemingly in putting his imprint on being a week after week top 24 wide receiver. Um, and so, you know, if I could take Curtis Samuel plus you know, who's been putting up around the same amount of points as Christian Kirk. If I could take him plus a two plus maybe something else and get Christian Kirk, I would make that move. Would you trade Kirk for DJ Moore? It seems like you shouldn't, but right now I would. You shouldn't you trade Kirk for DJ Moore? You're getting more. Oh, I'm getting more? I'm, I would go, I would the go the other way. What he's, what I'd go the other way. Say. Um, I would... <laughs> <laughs> would I trade DJ Moore to get Christian Kirk, or would yeah. I trade? Would you trade? Which side do you want? Do you Let's want put Kirk it, or Moore? I mean, Jeez. I clearly just said I wanted the Kirk side. Uh, that's fine. I'm just making. Wait, sure. you did? Yeah. You want Kirk? Yeah. Hmm. 
That's hot I think fire I, right I there. I think if I own Kirk anywhere, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ride him out. Unless, Here's the difference between the two guys. Like I'm we're on an offense that clearly is gonna use the dog piss out of him, yeah. and I don't know what the fuck's happening in Carolina. We can like DJ Moore all we want, which I have for a while, but like He's not putting up Christian Kirk fucking numbers right now. And I'm sure Christian Kirk will wax and wane a little bit. And DJ Moore will have some good games. And Baker hasn't been there for that long. So we got to give a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. But we got fucking Ben McAdoo fucking calling the plays over yeah, there in that's, Carolina. That's problematic. Like, what the fuck? Ben McAdoo do. Would you trade Christian Kirk for Traylon Burks? No. I, I'm keeping Traylon. If that's... But, you answer these questions. Yeah. Would you trade? Would you trade Christian, Christian Kirk, Kirk to receive Traylon Burks? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Whatever he says, just it's the opposite of what he means. Okay. When you it would, comes to you would prefer Traylon over Kirk. You have to phrase it differently. We got to okay. cater to him. Who do you want more, Traylon or Kirk? You still want Traylon? I'll, I'll you would Traylon use Burks. Kirk okay. to go get Traylon. That's but would that be, would that be an offer That's that a, you would send out? Yeah, it's a good question. I'll send man. that out. Okay. It's a good Mostly I'm going after Trey Kirk, Lon. but I would, because I'm trying to get points in my lineup. It's um, a good it, stab yeah. at Traylon right there. Yeah, man. I think it is. Um, another trade for me would be uh, Michael Gallup. Yeah, for sure. It's clear that they need another point of uh, content, uh, point of attack in that offense. Thirsty. Pour, pour one out for Jalen Tolbert. I mean, they, I think they just cut Houston this week. So maybe Tolbert, maybe it's signs for Tolbert getting on the field. But it's clear that they need another guy. Um, I'm just, you know, Gallup was averaging like 6.4 targets through the last eight games of last year. Yeah. Um, Dak, when he's out there and, and they're both healthy, Dak will absolutely target Gallup without even thinking about it. And again, they're desperately searching for another yeah. target. So I think Michael Gallup could be had. I just saw him get basically in one of our home leagues, get almost not necessarily a throw in, but like, was was a piece in a trade that didn't need to happen and somebody seemingly willingly threw him in as uh, like to really make the trade be bad in in the guy who was throwing gallops in direction in my opinion because you didn't need to throw if gallop if you didn't throw gallop in it would have been a decent trade but you threw gallop in and now it was way bad in the other direction because the guy who was winning the trade got gallop back yeah. uh, so that tells me maybe in the normal pweebs uh that maybe there is a downtick in the gallop uh, value. People standpoint. never really loved Gallup. Well, I'm just saying, like there may be. I mean, you know, he's been good. Right. If he's out there, he's time. he's good. Uh, so, who uh, who else you got? Would you trade it to for Alan Lazard? Yes. Yeah, we we had yep. I think we had that question. We had that question in the in the in the Discord chat. Patrons in the patrons. Yeah. Yeah. I, a late second for Lazard, yeah, because I don't think that Ooh, Rogers. Caveat, late. Second. Well, it's, that's what it said in the question, it, which we've already I said understand. several times. So tonight. we'll just call it a mid second. Silly we'll just, to we'll project. Just call it, we'll just call it a mid second because that's the easiest way to do it. In week two, we'll just call it a mid second. I think he's gonna get peppered with targets because Rogers trusts him. Right. He doesn't trust him right now, and he trusts Cobb, but Cobb's a shell of his former self. Somebody's got to get targets. Where, but he's spreading it around. Yeah, he was spreading it around a lot, but, but he Lazard's got coming touchdown. off injury. Yeah, and he was coming. He's going to get those injury. high value targets that we were talking about with JB earlier. Texting JB about under the yeah. table. Don't you worry about texting so, JB. So enough. he he mixed he missed week one. Then he comes out as a ninety percent route participation, only a twelve point five oh, target rate, which is isn't great to start off. But again, kind of coming back off of something. Well, what's hey, dot? I didn't know that A dot had to correlate to also, how good target share is. Also, well, you, they were they were leading this game a good bit. They they were leaning a the, lot of Aaron the Jones, whole bit. <laughs> a lot of Aaron Jones usage on short passes and runs. So you know, obviously, if you know, we'll see how that kind of pans out. Twenty eight point six percent red zone targets, which you know, is fine. It's only one game, uh, but really finished strong the last four out of the five games um, in twenty twenty one. Uh, double digits in all of those. One stinker, 4.8 points, um, and then had 20.9, 13.8, 19.2, and 24.5 uh, finishes through the last season with Aaron Rodgers, with Devontae Adams. Yeah, It's clear to me that Aaron Rodgers doesn't want to necessarily you know, trust Watson right now, trust Romeo Dubs right now, trust 
you know, just about anybody else on that offense, not named Aaron Jones, maybe a little Sammy Watkins and and and, um, and AJ Dillon. I think he likes Dillon. Yeah, so the yeah. running backs are fine, um, but well, they're looking for him. And I just feel like, like you said, right to lead this off, he's in the trust tree. And I feel like he's just going to get like, even with that touchdown pass, man, like it was just that looked different than a lot of the throws to all the other guys where it was like there was just that thing that Rodgers likes where, hey, I took a second. I took the stutter. I threw you the touchdown. Like yeah. we're on the same fucking page here. And you could say, you know, maybe it's not the best value ever. But if you're, if you're looking for, a, you know, a third wide receiver or some depth on a team, I think Lazard's going to have some big weeks. Um, and he'll have some up and down. And then if Rodgers comes back, if he trade the two this week I th- or this year, I feel like he'll still be worth a two next year if Rodgers comes back. So I feel like that value will be able to be get to get back. But I do think that if you kind of wait a little while longer and you do see a little chemistry build with Lazard, will he ever be a get a one? No. But I mean, I feel like it'll be. Yeah, I don't uh, think his value it, can go down too much. Right? right. And I feel like if you could get the two, it'd probably be fine. And it could turn into two twos plus maybe a player, you know, whatever. It could, you know, I don't think it's going to go to a one. Turning into two two. I don't. I'd, pr- <laughs> I'd pretty easily trade two two. Right. For, for at Lazard What a here. bust. What a terrible pick. Uh, but yeah, Lazard trade target for me for sure. Yeah. Um, currently. Uh, who you got? You got another one for us, Matt? Uh, Nico Collins. Why? Why interested in Nico? He's young. He's getting. He's getting. He's there's. A, get your drink ready, there, Jay Wayne. He's got the A dot over Cooks. I'm so sick of the A dot. <laughs> Everyone hated Jarvis Landry because of bad A dot. But if your target shares up and you're catching balls and we're playing PPR, I don't understand what the fuck the A dot matters. We need JB back too. on. He's getting the targets. We need too. JB, JB back on to explain to me target share and A dot correlation because I I just he's getting he's getting the targets. He's a good player. He flashed last year. He's young still. Cooks is not going to be there for long. Anyone that I liked. That's not doing great right now. I'm down to trade for so. right, and that's kind of what this is a little and bit. I don't think Collins is doing bad. He's just not. He's doing the same thing Traylon is. He's getting four for fifty, like, right, which is fine. Right. I mean that's flex. That's flexible. What I'm what you know, and now I'm gonna make a point here in the next Trying couple to flex with Nico. Couple things, couple uh, guys here, or at least one or two guys here, is that you know I'm. I'm interested in buying guys that I think are good, maybe that aren't on offenses that have quite broken out yet. Christian Kirk, obviously, on the Jaguars has broken out a little bit, but yep. Evan Ingram we'll get to in a minute. Yep. Um, maybe not quite to the potential where that offense could be going. Um, and Nico Collins is on an offense right now that, you know, all it takes is a, a new quarterback and and one year, and I think they got some picks. Um, and and we could be looking at a whole different. The Texans, oh, they got some picks. We looking could, at you, Cleveland Browns. We could be looking at the Texans in a whole different light really quickly. So yeah. players that you like and you and you're interested in and you trust to be that you think are going to be good that are a little bit more on the cheap right now. I'm fine with invest. Like people like you know JB when we talked about Pierce was crushing Ooh. Damian Pierce because or when we talked about yeah when we talked about Pierce was crushing him. Because the Texans' offense was bad, they're not. They're presumably not going to be bad forever. When Deshaun Watson showed up, all of a sudden, yeah. there was you know pieces to buy in that offense. I'm not saying they're going to get, but Texans finish, you know, down near the bottom. Maybe they trade one of those first. All of a sudden, maybe they have C.J. Stroud, who ends up being the best out of this bunch, and that offense is completely yeah. turned around. And now they you could end up with a they could end up with a, a Will Levis. They right. could end up with a. I don't know. Anthony Richardson not having a great year so far. No, but, not not great um, so far. But yeah, but. Things can change in a hurry. Sure. So if there's guys that I like, I'll buy into in a bad offense if they're still cheap enough. Nico was an off-season buy for us yeah. and an in-season buy still. So yeah. I like that. Um, and I'll go right to the other th- the other players. And, and this one's not even going to be bad for long. But really, this is more about Cle- buying Cleveland Browns right now. Yep. I'll buy David Bell. I'll buy Njoku. I would buy DPJ if Always possible. Always buying DPJ. Um, he's in the he's, the he's the same player. He's... And, same player Nico is right, and I and I'm and I'm basically just saying the same thing you said about Nico. Offense is fine right now; it's whatever. But, but the, we know the light we know at the end of the tunnel is a lot right. clearer for you, Cleveland. There, you don't even have Houston. to be on a prayer on on for, like you are on some of these other bad offenses that there is going to be a big change. Um, you do know that Deshaun Watson is is at the end of that tunnel, and maybe he does struggle for 
a few games coming back. I think he can play for. I think he can practice for the, like three weeks before the before he can play. Or even like even that. if it's just a mental thing because he's getting booed and yelled at. Like he's especially got, the first game back. He's got he's got it. He can run through some games, run that out, and then come into next season and kind of be on a you know clean slate. Not not saying that he should be or anything. Yeah. I'm just strictly talking football. Yeah. Um, this is dynasty we're talking about. I'm so. buying David Bell because I love the profile of the player and I think he's he fits perfectly in what they're going to do and he hasn't done anything just yet. Maybe yeah. no maybe nobody wants to sell him because they just got him. But I'd also buy a David Njoku. He's been out there. There's been 147 total offensive snaps. snaps. Njoku's been out there for 134 of them uh, with you know a 93% snap share and 65% route participation. Um, you know, we know that Joku has the profile and has been running around out there. He's a freak. Um, he's a freak. So he's got to be super duper cheap at this point. He's done nothing really this season so far either. So I think you could buy him and DPJ as well. So kind of just the idea of buying into the offense that's not particularly great and putting up big fantasy points. We said week one, hey, go buy uh Amari Cooper and just kind of close your eyes for a minute. You week didn't, you week didn't two, close your eyes very long. Right, week two it really panned out, but that's probably going to be kind of up and down really, all yeah, season. Yeah. Uh, so just that's kind of the theory there. What you got another guy for us? Um, I mean, I'd still be buying Monty. Yeah. I I think his I think the people are looking at the Bears' offense and poo pooing it, but I mean, we just saw last week the Bears did nothing and Monty still had 120, 120 yards rushing. Yeah, no, I think and, and hasn't gotten the and he's going to be the preferred he's going to be the preferred passing down target right. over Herbert as well too. The good's good with Monty. The bad is bad when the Bears are bad. Um, the rain game he wasn't good. Herbert was a little better, but this last game you saw what Monty can really do. He's won some people some money through fantasy seasons. He gets on heaters and is one of the better backs in the league. Um, that Bears pass uh, block or run blocking unit looked half decent against the Packers now like JB was saying they do have a little bit of a run funnel going they've been a run funnel defense for a couple of years now uh, but I, I agree and he's also in a contract year so he may not even be a bear next year yeah. um, you had another one on here who I really liked um, we're talking about uh, Mr. Hopkins I think I think Nuke is is a good buy right now uh, just again People forgot about, about him. People, people forgot gonna... about him. He was, a, he, you know, he's kind of may, maybe a little bit dead. Maybe they're thinking the Cardinals suck. All of the above took a miracle for them to win this one. Kind of in the same vein as the yeah. Pittman that we just talked about. The offense clearly needs DeAndre Hopkins, in my opinion, to 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 function yeah. at a reasonable level. Um, so I, I absolutely love that. I mean, the one Hopkins share I had, I traded him last year right before the playoffs for... I traded at Hopkins for Mike Williams in a second. I'm still pretty happy with that one. What would you trade for Nuke? I mean, if I could trade that mid-second, I mean, I'd consider that. What about, has does our Clemson affiliate have an opinion on trading for Nuke? You trading a second for a 30-year-old wide receiver? The, the illustrious 23 Shut the class? <laughs> I'm going to come over the table and ask you to... Go. What? The God Flip class? Flip it. The fucking God class? You're trading a it's second? The first. For... It's the first. It's just the top 12. It's not Only the whole top 12 class. So you're, obvi- you're not... clearly not trading uh, for Nuke if you are if you feel like you're a rebuilding team. So no, absolutely If you're a contender, you're going to be hopefully giving away... Me, I'll trade Curtis Samuel. A seven yeah. or... <laughs> yes, Curtis Samuel. A seven... Once again, in a heartbeat. A two seven or later for Nuke. Yeah. Uh, basically, what do you think over there? I think it's a little early. Uh, yeah, he's worth it. He's he, he's gonna come back fucking fresh. It's just, do you believe in Kyler Murray or not? You yeah, know, I guess I, that's the question. I believe that Kyler Murray's gonna throw the ball to him. Right. <laughs> that's all I need. <laughs> and Kyler's good. So that's all I really, you know. Uh, but so yeah, I think I think Nuke is a is a great. That was like a a redraft cheat code and even a dynasty cheat code to to some extent. Um, so we've kind of touched a lot of bases on a lot of different guys here. Um, let's see, Damian Pierce. Throw a running back in there. You know, not a whole lot of of production yet, and guys who maybe drafted him 
earlier as opposed to the guys who drafted him later at the one six those one six guys one seven one eight one first round pierce guys probably not coming off of pierce but maybe those other guys might and really this to me just comes down to you know the week two we saw the usage tick up today we saw lovey smith saying i don't need to say much to damian pierce damian pierce is basically embodying what we want this team to be doing a little bit extra running really hard finishing drives doing things so you know I think, and to me, watching Damian Pierce, and I know nobody loves the eyeball test, but it was, it was, he was just kind of one of those players where every single run, it would just seem like it was just a tug of the jersey or a little shoestring or a little bit of, you were holding your breath because each one seemed like he was just a hair away from getting to that next level, which you saw him getting to that next level in the preseason and the fact that he seemed like he was just on that cusp in the regular season here in a big game versus the Broncos. I I think that, that, that gives me a little bit of reassurance that he belongs and that he looks like he could pop. So if, if, if able, I'm not saying you need to trade a first for Damian Pierce. Um, I'm still of the camp that I'm okay with it. Um, I know nobody's going to like that. And I'm not saying you should necessarily do that. I'm but I'm saying you should 100% not do that. I'm just saying that I think there is a lot of juice with Damian Pierce. Um, and if he gets loose and starts wreaking havoc, you can kiss a first at any, of any kind behind. Uh, I mean, I hope um, that happens for all my Damian Pierce shares I don't have. But I'm, I'm interested in testing the waters for Damian Pierce. Um, another a little, a little bit more of a of a redraft trade would be Lenny Lenny Fournette you probably don't necessarily want to trade for him in in dynasty unless it's a little further down the line here yeah yeah uh, but really at 129 snaps that Brady's played he's been out there for 105 uh, 21 attempts and 24 attempts 15.7 uh, points in the first game 9 9.4 in the last game those two defenses were Dallas and New Orleans they're shaping up to be pretty decent defenses um, and New Orleans always gives yeah. Tampa a, a, a solid run here. Lenny hadn't gotten in the end zone yet, and Rashad White is basically nowhere to be found where they said they were going to you know, be resting Lenny a little he, more. He's there more to be found than Keyshawn Vaughn. For sure. Um, but what I will say is that in the dynasty setting, maybe I would entertain trying to see if I could grab a little bit of Rashad White, not for anything crazy expensive, but if there was anything to the usage of Lenny right now, to me suggests that if something happened that there'd be a whole lot of Rashad White in the fold here. Um, he's not getting used now, and he's been out there a little bit. He's looked fine, um, but I do think, you know, the offensive line's not great, but I, maybe somebody who was really into Rashad White thinking that he was going to cut more into Lenny to start the season, maybe there might be an opportunity to buy a little Rashad White. Yeah, I'm just worried that the guy who paid – paid for him has paid an early second for him so i just don't know if they're gonna they're gonna want their investment back at this point yeah there's no there's no sense in trading him two two games into his career some people don't that some people panic instead of have patience well though. again those people are short-sighted um and please join my leagues do you have any more trade targets for us i mean sanders does not look good he's been getting the overwhelming share of the He's been getting the majority of the running back snaps. That offense looks good. The whole team looks fucking good, if we're being honest with the Eagles. They yeah, could the be Eagles a Super Bowl awesome. contender. The Eagles look awesome. Um, he was, people were poo-pooing on him because of Gainwell, and Sanders has been the preferred back so far. So Agreed. Jalen Hurts eats a little bit up of, of what yeah, you could I get. Think, but I think he's going to eat in, in, into the touchdowns, which, sure. is, which, which sucks because – I mean, Sanders is still a good player. There's a reason he was the he was the number one running back coming in coming out of as, as, out of high school. Again, I know I'm a I'm a bit biased there with Miles, Penn State. Um, all right, I'll throw three more quick ones out there. Dolchich, which we talked about in the live stream 9:30 on Mondays, yep. doing recaps. Um, just doesn't seem like any tight end has taken a hold of that just yet. He's on IR. Yeah, he kind of fell off a little bit in drafts near the end of the. Uh, draft cycle there he wasn't being drafted super high i ended up getting pretty pretty cheap in a lot of uh rookie drafts near the end there um and maybe it'll be a committee the whole rest of the season but maybe dolchich can grab a hold of that evan ingram mentioned him earlier um 80 percent and 85 percent route participation in his first two games 27 percent target share this past week what's held evan ingram back has been health and and boneheaded drops yeah that's it and the ability to catch the ball consistently um, but 
right now he looks like he could be built into this offense pretty heavily and has been looking pretty good out there. Um, so uh, everybody's always looking for sneaky, a tight end. Sneaky, decent offense. Right, right. The, Jaguar, which again, Jaguars, Lions. Buy into that that sneaky, decent offense to maybe be ascending instead of, yeah. you know, get it while it's cheap. And then George Pickens hasn't really done anything. He's been out there a whole lot. Maybe when we get a, a Kenny Pickett change out yeah. that you see a little bit more Kenny. But I doubt anybody's trading Kenny Pickett right I would now. doubt that very much so, but too. got to throw it out there. So If I can right. throw in another yeah, super cheap tight end, Hayden Hurst. Um, getting a ton of usage. Ton, And he's going to get even more usage with Sample probably going on IR. Or definitely going on IR. Probably out for a good bit of time. So um, he's going to be out there. And that's another... That's not a sneak good offense. That's just a very good offense. Right. And it ha- maybe not quite up to snuff off the rip, but I think we'll get there eventually. Yeah. Uh, so I like that. We're always, everybody's always looking for tight ends. And, you know, sometimes the cheap guys. Especially in tight end premium. Right. All right. Well, that's going to do it for tonight's podcast and the trade targets. Um, be sure to subscribe, like, comment below. Uh we appreciate y'all. We got a $5 holler on the Discord. You can, uh, all sorts of options over there on the Patreon. We're having a lot of fun in the Discord. Uh, get your questions answered. As we move forward here, we'll be talking about some of the Patreon trades live on air. Uh, we'll be maybe getting into some topics at the Patreon people want to do live on air. So uh, a lot of uh, a lot of fun. And if you've just been liking what you're getting from us, that's a good way to support us. Give us five bucks a month and or go to revelrybrewco.com um, and grab a T-shirt, man. They're good T-shirts, quality shirt, um, and that also helps support the squad. So um, until next week, again, 930, streaming Monday nights. Come and uh, hang out with your boys. Another way that you could potentially get your questions answered. So, oh, T-shirt giveaway, five-star review. Hit us up. Send them on the uh, socials, on the email. You can find those anywhere that this is coming out on. And uh, you give us a five star, we'll enter you in a raffle to get a free t-shirt. So, Yeah, Twitter, Instagram, DM me. Send me an email, dffdynasty at gmail.com. Lots of ways to get in contact with you boys. iTunes, Spotify. That's the little five star reviews I want. I'll take the YouTube subby. If you've already done it, send us proof. I'll put you in the contest. Let's go. Get a free t-shirt. Give them tees away. Buy one or give us a $5 holler. Support your guys. Or we just appreciate you in general. And we'll see you next time. Peace.